So we're here with the AM Systems right here. Hello, so who are you? I'm uh, Wijnald Germs. I'm a program man manager for 3D printed structural electronics uh, at the uh, AM Systems Center. And uh, what are you looking at here? Here we're looking at uh, our latest demonstrator to uh, actually demonstrate the combination of 3D printing with uh, printed electronics uh, technologies. So this is the head of a uh, gear shifter. And you see here that the electronics is in a very small volume. And each number has its own LED, so it shows also if you would place sensors, you can have complexity in a very small volume there of your product. So uh, this could be reliable and used as a gear shift? Uh, well, th this is our, uh, one of the first that is uh, made. Uh, it is of a material that has sufficient strength for dental implants, so I think so, yeah. So, uh, very strong 3D printing is possible? Well, uh, very strong, of course, uh, 3D printing is known that it's a little bit less strong often than, than, than um, uh, in mold uh, of molding uh, products. But um, yeah, it's, it's of, uh, the, the quality has improved a lot uh, lately, yeah. And what you're showing here is a, it's a knee. Let me jump over here. Uh. Yes. So this is an implant uh, with a sensor in there. Um, so the these kind of implants, when you uh, have them in your knee, then at some point they have to be replaced. And this is actually uh, measuring with sensors whether it's actually necessary to already uh, operate somebody. How would it measure? Uh, there's a sensor in here that would then... Put it in the uh, knee? Uh, yeah, so first you already put it in your knee if you need this implant and then it uh, actually measures the pressure uh, locally to see whether it should be uh, replaced or not. So that's uh, uh, again a combination of 3D printing and... Yeah. Uh, and uh, embedded electronics uh, in it. Yeah. So that's your speciality to do hybrids? Uh, yes, that's, uh, that's our speciality. We uh, develop equipment concepts for this. Uh, so this equipment is not yet uh, in the market to combine it with these uh, 3D printing technologies. And uh, here, is this USB sticks? Uh, yes, uh, these are USB sticks uh, with uh, uh, the flash drive and also an LED. Uh, these show actually the uh, small series manufacturing that you can easily change the logo to your company and can also adapt the electronics to it. So you don't need a new PCB, just uh, rearrange your electronics. We have all these demos right here with different logos. Yeah. And, so, and these are SLS printed and these are SLA. And are you putting a chip inside the... What is this? Yes, so this is uh, just a, a chip to show you the, the pick and place and what you could uh, think of also for complexity. So, uh, could also have large chips in there. This could be a big ARM processor. Yeah. To do what? Uh, anything you can imagine, of course. Uh, <laughs> we can go to higher and higher complexity. Uh, maybe uh, uh, already computing the sensor data that's uh, harvesting. So, uh, computing the sensor data, yeah, there should be a lot of other electronics too, right? Yeah, yeah, so this is just showing the, uh, the concept of pick and place uh, something in 3D printing. Nice. You have a big machine that can do this? Yes, we have. Uh, so that's uh, the machine is not here. No, no just. Um, yeah. But uh, we have a movie also online um, with a large uh, stereolithography machine that we developed, and uh, so this uh, platform is made to do multi-technology manufacturing. So also combining it with extrusion, uh, post curing of conductive tracks, pick and place. So that is. Uh, uh, so one stop for your whole digital design should go in there and then the final product should come out. So this is still in development, but we're already quite far with it. So is it the coolest 3D printer in the world? Yeah, it is definitely the, the coolest. Yeah. Also yeah, you the, designed it? Uh, I didn't design it personally, my colleagues, uh, we did it uh, all How together, of course. How many colleagues you have? Uh, well, we're in a group of 30 people and uh, with all kinds of disciplines, so uh, we're working on this. Uh, yeah, it's really a team effort. Yeah. And it's all about doing hybrid, future 3D printing, 3D future, the useful uh, 3D printing, right? You, yeah. Uh, you're making teeth? Yeah, so it's, it's actually all uh, directed at the industrial uh, additive manufacturing, as we call it. So these teeth, uh, these ones actually show uh, multi-material uh, stereolithography. So here on the back side, you can see they have actually two materials. And uh, actually, depending on the thickness of this outer layer, it changes the color of your teeth. Oh, so you can you can have yellow teeth. Yeah. If you have yellow teeth, it's better to have a yellow crown Matching. next to it. Yeah. So you can you can analyze all the other teeth and match. Yeah. That's amazing. Do you have yeah. this happen for real now? 
Uh, no, it's not happening yet. So these crowns, they are available, uh, but usually uh, people put it in the back of their mouth. There it's acceptable to have a somewhat color difference, but when it's in front of your, uh, in front of your face, then uh, yeah, it, it has to uh, match better in the color. And it's ready to match? Uh, no, this is also still in development. We're working on this with a couple of industrial partners. Uh, yeah. So soon? Uh, yeah, we hope it uh, will be soon uh, available soon. So people yeah. can wait another couple of years before they go to the dentist, and then there will be a solution from you. Uh, this hopefully, is, this is all printed in one go too, right? Yeah, uh, there was no assembly here, so it was printed with uh, SLS. Only the powder needs to be removed, and you can actually see that you can uh, have it drive. So just catch it there. Oh, oh you got it. Yeah. Cool. And what are you doing with those shoe soles? So these shoe soles, they have a structure in here that actually makes the mechanical properties uh, anisotropic. So it can be more flexible in this direction, but less flexible in, in this direction. Oh. So that's uh, the, the structure of those things yeah. there? Yeah. So you, uh, in this case, only require one material here, but you have different properties. So I guess in your labs, you've broken a lot of things, right? While you were testing. Uh, yes, of course. Off and you're like, Oops, let's do another one. Uh, yeah, of course, everywhere when you try new things, also some things uh, can go wrong. And uh, of course, we're looking for the boundaries of what, uh, what is possible and uh, whether we can shift those boundaries. Yeah. Are, are, you, uh, are you measuring uh, the strength of what you do? You have machines for that? Uh, yes, we also have machines for that. So uh, for that, we also we have uh, other departments and other institutes from TNO, so like the Brightlands Materials Center Your next partners. door. Yeah, so we're from the same uh, mother organization. Yeah. And uh, what are you speaking about? You had a speech, right? Yes. So what are you speaking about? Uh, well, there uh, I also uh, actually showed uh, what we are able to do now, why you would want to uh, 3D print uh, with embedded electronics. And um, so this is actually showing the free form aspect of it. Uh, the USB sticks more, the, the, the small series manufacturing. And uh, I think in general, uh, yeah, using these technologies, uh, it uh, would increase your flexibility also for uh, having a, a wider product portfolio and a faster change, you can faster change your product uh, in this way because you don't have product specific tooling. So the future of uh, the world with 3D printing is going to be different than the past? Uh, of course something should be different otherwise we wouldn't work on it. Uh, of course the, the existing technologies they also still have their use but uh, this would definitely change things for, uh, for product portfolios, yeah. So you're speaking with lots of people all over the world? Yes, yeah. And yes. they are asking for more and more different things and you can do it? Uh, of course, uh, people also ask for things that we cannot do and of course the challenge is to, to do as, as much as possible and always uh, do new things again. Yeah. So what did they ask you cannot do? Uh, well, one thing I heard today was actually uh, micro channels of one micron width uh, to print them in 3D. And uh, so that's uh, at this point a step too far. Yeah. But who knows in the future?